All right, New York Giants fans, this is Tim with All Line Big Blue bringing you the best of New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. Oh, we're grinding it out here in the March 2nd. It's it's difficult to come up with daily giant content. It really is sometimes, but you know what? I like doing it. I like trying to do different stuff, come up with different topics and different ideas. And honestly, if you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. But I wanted to talk about two things today, or a couple things, actually. The salary cap for the New York Giants. We need to have some... We need to be, as fans, in some ways, we need to be grounded in reality. The reality of the 2021 salary cap is we may not have the, the, the salary cap capital to go out and make the splash that some fans, a lot of fans, because I'm one of them, who, fans that want the Giants to make. And that's just plain and simple. Even if you're able to clear $38 million, we've talked about this a million times. Let's just make it easy. Let's say we clear $40 million. You know, we're still going to have to put aside the money for the, for the rookie pool. If you decide that you're going to sign Leonard Williams, even if you sign him for 20 and convince him to take 16 the first year, you've already burned through more than half your cap space between the, sal- between the rookie salary pool and Leonard Williams. So that $40 million is, is probably more along the lines now having $18 million. And I've heard the rumors, and I've heard people say on Twitter and other places, well, we'll get players, to, we'll get people like, you know, James Bradbury and Blake Martinez to restructure their contracts so we could sign Dalvin Tomlinson. Okay, so we're going to ask two integral parts of the defense who just signed their deals, if they would be willing to restructure them a year later after coming to the team, unless you're adding more money onto their contracts and more years onto the contracts, if I was a, if I, if I was a agent from one of these guys, I would not sit there and say, Hey, you know what? You should restructure your contracts so they give this give these guys more money so they can go out and sign more people no if i'm the age i'm like you're 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 your second year into your contract yeah i'm all about being a team player but agents need to watch after the best interests of their clients not the organization so like i said and also we've mentioned this a bazillion times you're working off the rule of 51 till after training camp, which means you're only counting against the cap, the top 51 contracts that you currently have. And that hamstrings certain teams that have limited cap space, because once the other contracts roll around, you need to make room for those players. And that, and that happens immediately after camp breaks. So while we all want to sign Allen Robinson and we all want to sign, you know, a player here and a player there, if you sign Leonard Williams, even, okay, like I said before, let's think about this for a minute. Let's say Leonard gets his, well, and you know what's funny, what, JJ, JJ Watt, he went to uh, Arizona, got like $16 million a year. I don't have a problem with JJ Watt going, I would rather pay JJ Watt $16 million a year then play, then pay Leonard Williams sixteen dollars, sixteen million dollars a year. I realize I even even at his advanced age, declining skills, and his injuries, JJ offers more in regards to double teams than Leonard Williams does. Leonard Williams does. JJ has a track history. He's has a, he does not just have one quality season at a high level. He has multiple. So as a stopgap player for the Cardinals, JJ is a pretty good fit. It's a surprising fit, but it would be a pretty good fit for the Cardinals because even if he is a half the player that he is, that he was, he's still probably going to be better than Leonard Williams. And I'm not saying Leonard, I'm not saying he's better than 2020 Leonard Williams, 
I'm saying 2020, 2021 Leonard Williams has the potential to revert back to 2018, 2019 Leonard Williams. It, it's just a known fact. A lot of times you give these guys that big contract after their monster season, they revert back to who they were and what they were. So if you sign Leonard Williams and you have your rookie pool, if you have 40 million, you probably only have about 18 left. And you have holes on the offensive line. And that's also under the assumption if you're waving Nate Solder or maybe trying to restructure Kevin Zeidler. If you wave Nate, you, you lost depth on the offensive line because it probably more likely Cam Fleming's not coming back. You're gonna need you're gonna need to fill some spots. You still need a CB2. You still need at least two linebackers. The pro, I, I am for, and I've said this before, I am for Leonard letting Leonard Williams walk. Getting back that compensatory pick for the third rounder and signing Dalvin Tomlinson and going out and signing two players for the contract that you would have given Leonard Williams. You know, I, I, I think Leonard Williams is a quality player, but I, I just don't see that giant nasty in him. I certainly hope I never get back in. I will kick your I don't see him saying things like that on the field. I just don't see it. And that's what I want for my defense. I want old school giant nasty. I want them to go after that quarterback in waves. And someone, you know, it's just, it's just the way I want them to play. And I think Dalvin Tomlinson has that nasty streak. Same with Dexter Lawrence. And I'm not saying Leonard Williams doesn't play with a chip on his shoulder and doesn't play, but Leonard Williams disappears too many times in too many situations. And to the point that, like I said, our cap needs to be monitored closely. I saw an article today that the Giants may potentially look at the running back Marlon Mack, the former Indianapolis Colt. I like Marlon. I like Marlon. You know why? Because he's a South Florida guy. He played at South Florida. I followed his career at USF. So I know, I know quite a bit about him. He had that one big season, you know, for, for Indianapolis, which was over in 19. We had two good seasons. Yeah. 18 and 19 were two good seasons. He ran for 900 yards. Well, what is it? 908 in 18 and over a thousand in 19. And then he was in week one against Jacksonville. He, uh, he suffered an Achilles injury and he was out all the entire season. So he's going to be the type of guy that, you, and this is a good example of salary cap players that we need to look at. He is the type of guy that is probably going to roll up a little bit more on the cheap because of the fact that he's coming off and he's five years into the league. He's had moderate success and he's probably because of the injury going to come off on the cheap. Plain and simple. I mean, he may take a, you know, he may take a one year prove it deal, like two, you know, two and a half, three million. And those are the type of players that we are going to need to look at with the cat, with the salary cap. You know, it's, it's, and again, it's not a slight against any players or the giants plan. It's just going to be what we refer to as reality. We have to realistically manage our options of what we have and what we need for 2021 and this place we are only going to be able to fill certain holes in 2021 via free agency. And there's just so much that we are going to be able to do during the draft. And really that's it. I mean, think about it that way. And that's why I said, we are probably not going to make the playoffs this year. the, The good news is there's so many teams in flux right now in the NFC East you have the Redskins who just released Alex Smith and they have a fantastic defense, but the offense is just as stagnant as ours. You got Dallas who has a plethora of talent, but they have their, their franchise quarterback still unsigned and coming back from injury. The Eagles are just a mess. 
So we have an opportunity, you know, to, to make some noise next year. And our schedule right now does not look as difficult. Now, I always say you cannot look at a team schedule till after training camp is over because then you'll get a better idea what some teams are. You cannot compare certain teams in 2020 and say that is going to be what they're going to do in 2021. You just can't. So we need to understand that while some games we're marking down as a gimme may not be that way in 2021 when the season rolls around. So we just need to understand and we need to be focused on the fact that we need to have certain expectations for the New York Giants during free agency and in the draft. I don't see us making the big splash. I really don't. I see us, and I've said it before, I see us, I see us signing second-tier, second-level players, which is nothing wrong with because there are still quality guys at second-tier who can be productive starters who may be only a stopgap measure for a couple seasons but that's what we're going to need to do. And also we're trying to see if our 2020 rookie class is going to pan out and we'll get a better indication about all of our linebackers in 2021. But we just need to, we just need to be focused and realistic expectations. And you have to, and I've said it before, we have to hope that Dave Gettleman again, two years in a row has the magic touch. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best of New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring that bell, I think you know what that means. That'd be awesome.